tonight's meeting uh, because the point of tonight is to get you all out there lobbying. We're at the point now that I think, you know, this is the perfect time in Australia and particularly in Victoria for us to make use of the resources that we've been putting together at the ARMM um, and actually go out and convince people. I think there's a couple of factors that are coalescing to make this a really ripe time for change in the regulations <clears throat> that we've got. And I should say, you have to excuse my voice. Um, it's the last week of semester and I've been doing about 12 hours of classes, lectures a week for the last few weeks, so it's a little bit, I'm running out, a little bit of voice. I think there's a couple of factors, like I was saying. The first is what Mark is talking about. We're behind the rest of the world. The rest of the world has actually already either taken steps or they've already had the regulations in place to ensure that raw milk can be safely provided to consumers. The fact that New Zealand has raw milk and that there's media around that at the moment and that there's a strong discussion in New Zealand about how that raw milk can be um, can continue to be produced in a way that's safe is really great for us because they're like us. You know, it's very easy for us to point to them because they live with us, you know, we know them, they're here, we have very similar government systems. That's a much easier story to tell to our regulators and our policy makers than Italy, which is a bit far away sometimes and they seem a bit different and there could be misunderstandings about how that might actually have lessons for us. The US is a good case as well for us to use. I think the other thing that's changed recently um, is the, the rules around raw cheeses. This fight has half been fought for us, really. We've got regulations that Dairy Food Safe Victoria are already working with to make sure that raw milk can be produced and used for the production of raw milk cheeses within Australia. We've got rules that allow the import of raw milk cheeses to Australia from other countries. We didn't have those a long time ago. That was a fight that took a bit of time, but it's laid the groundwork because we can very easily point to those and say, we're not talking about reinventing the wheel. We're just talking about extending regulations that you've already agreed to and you've already found merit in. People aren't dying as a result of those. Um, <clears throat> and I think we're, we're also at a good point because there is a global conversation going about the importance of the production line and food miles and being close to the people that actually produce our food. And in some part, that's a, an argument that's going on because of the shift in global consciousness around our impact on the world and our impact on our, our environment, our footprint. And I think that's something that we can really speak to here in Australia because we are living in a time where climate change and un, uh, unsuitable and unsustainable production methods are taking their toll on our country and on our capacity to produce sustainably, effectively good food. And I think that's something that our, not all of them, but a lot of our policymakers are interested in speaking about and lobbying about as well. So I really think we've got a lot of good allies to be working with. The thing for us is that this is not a legal issue at all. The freedom argument, we have the right to raw milk, doesn't work in Australia. It might work for us with our families, it might make us, you know, that might be the sentiment that we have, but unfortunately in our legal system, that's not the argument that's going to get us to the place that we actually have raw milk produced for human consumption so that we can purchase it above the table, not um, through these shady co-ops that we've all got going at the moment. The, the way that we can get political change is by getting our elected officials to change the rules and to tell Dairy Food Safe to shift their regulations and to start regulating the, uh, the production and then the transport and sale of raw milk. So what we've produced is a research pack, which is available online, and that's got all of the best and most up-to-date research about the safety of raw milk, the way it's been regulated in other countries, including it looks a lot to America. It's got information about the economic impact of actually opening up this new, emerging, exciting market uh, for small-scale dairy farmers. And it's got information on the health benefits of the, uh, the consumption of raw milk, the things that Mark was talking about around the impacts on children and also the impacts on other things like eczema, not just asthma, eczema, gut issues, a whole range of issues that there's a lot of evidence about. The problem for us is that people don't know about that because the media around raw milk is tied up in this enormous culture of fear that we've got in Australia. There's a fear of everything. Everything makes us sick and we're very conditioned to think about our government as a, a body that protects us and to trust that. I think there's, you know, it's a, it's a product of our particular history that we don't question a lot. There's a tendency to accept authority to, you know, we've got very clear instances of the tall poppy syndrome where people who actually have great evidence, great research, great ideas are cut down at the knees because we don't really like people 
challenging the status quo here. It takes a lot to get that movement through, and that's part of what we're trying to do. Um, and I think that's what the research pack can certainly help us do, because it proves that there is this research. We're not a bunch of loopy people who are you know, arguing for something that there's no evidence for. We've got an evidence base behind us. The rest of the world is actually doing this already. And these regulatory changes are just about bringing Australia in line with global best practice, which is where we want to be, certainly in some other areas. So, how to lobby. Who here has actually lobbied before? Who's met their elected and elected official? Can you put your hands up a bit higher? Okay, so we've got about a third of people here. Um, did you write letters or did you actually meet them? Both. Both? And what was your response to that? I mean, how did you find it? Empowering. Yeah. You're taking action. You're at least, you know, voicing your, what you want. You've got no chance of getting what you want if you don't even say it out loud. Yep, yep, yep. How did everyone else find it? Were they Slow. open? Slow. Slow. I'll talk about that a bit more in a moment. But the other thing that's important, apart from making personal contact, actually showing up, um, is having the evidence behind you. Because once you've managed to have that personal impact, you've somehow captured a bit of their attention, what are you going to do to actually prove that there's evidence behind you that, like I said, you're not just some loony with a crazy idea for changing the way Australia works to try and protect their citizens. We're actually trying to bring in new information to change the mindset that these guys have. And it's not because they're bad, it's not because they're stupid, it's because they don't have the information. And because our media and our universities haven't actually been particularly good at getting that information out to them. And for a lot of us, we're new to this information as well. So making sure that you're prepared, that you've got the research pack there, that you're knowledgeable about it. You don't have to be an expert. You certainly don't have to be like Mark and pull out statistics. He's been doing this for a long time. That's what he does. But if we can go in and demonstrate that we've actually got knowledge behind us and that we can back it up with a document that's referenced, you know, that's got credible stuff, that makes a huge difference. And the other thing is letter writing. Because our elected officials, um, they respond to us. You know, it's part of their responsibility to actually reply to the letters that we send them. That is a way of keeping them also keeping tally of who's saying what. And again, if they only get a certain number of oppositional letters and quite a large number of letters in support of this, letters that capture their attention again, not just standard pro forma letters, but letters pictures that, of your family on it. And stories about your yes. family. And that's certainly something that we um, we learned at the beginning of this year when a lot of you were meeting your MPs. Um, or writing to your MPs when there was the initial change in the regulations in December, January, uh, what we heard from MPs was that when they get a pro forma letter, they just think anyone could have whacked my name on this pro forma letter, put a, put a stamp on it, signed their name at the bottom and sent it off. But the people who actually took the time right at the front to tell their story, why is this an issue that you're writing to them about now? That's what got their attention. It was those people who then got invited to the meeting with them. And it's those people who got their voices heard. And that's why um, when you look at the lobby pack, I'll, we don't have copies for everyone today, but we've got enough copies that you should be able to at least have a peek at one or look at uh, one between two or three. Um, you'll see in the pro forma letter that I've left space for you to put in your story. And I've given you some hints about the sort of things that you can include. Why do you drink raw milk? When did you start drinking raw milk? There's a value in being honest about some of these things as well. Have you ever been sick because of raw milk? Do you know other people? who drink raw milk. Why do they drink raw milk? What has it meant to you that Jane Garrett brought in the regulations last year that raw milk now has to be tainted so that it's not actually drinkable? What does it mean to you that if you are still getting raw milk, you're getting it on the black market? What risks might that bring into it? Or what risks does it not bring into it? Because you actually know your farmer, know that your farmer's adhering to certain standards and so on. It's those personal stories and an impact on your life that can really catch the attention of your MPs. And once you've got their attention, the trick is backing it up with more information. So I think there's sort of two steps to this when you're actually doing the lobbying. The first is sending out the letter. Send it to your MP. It's two pages max. There's a lot of space for you to put in a paragraph or so from your own perspective. And then there's the fundamentals of the information that we're trying to communicate. That Australia and Canada are the only countries that completely blanket ban the sale of raw cow's milk for human consumption. But that there are all of these scientific studies that find scientific studies and practical experience from other countries that have found that it can be produced and sold to consumers in a way that is safe and that doesn't create a, um, a public health crisis or even a public health issue. Uh, once you've sent that letter, the trick is to follow it up with a phone call. Call them after a week. You know, I sent you this email or I sent you this letter 
I'm really concerned about these um, regulations. I'm a consumer of raw milk. This is an issue that's very close to my heart because it's helped me with ABC. For me, it's been eczema and gut issues. And I can speak very, very much from the heart about the how this has changed my life. Having access to raw milk has actually made me healthy. And not having access for the periods where I couldn't get it, I had a complete relapse into some of these medical <coughs> issues that our conventional medical system actually has no way of dealing with. When I tell people that story, they're much more willing to listen than if I'm just rattling off statistics. Because, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm just a person who's struggling as well in, you know, in their life. Yeah? Um, I'm 